Hi, Larry. Thanks for having me, and thanks to Sydney um, and Tiana, who we'll hear from later. Um, my name is pronounced Husna, but I appreciate <laughs> your effort. Um, I'll read a little bit from my chapbook, which is out of print. It was published by The Head and the Hand at the end of my YPL term. Saccharine cracked ancestral pool of blood for a hive. Your lips were bitter lemon peels, zest heavier than lead, prodding through a skin predestined, predetermined for more than your expectations. You wanted me to move in the Muslim way. Translation, for my soul to leave its body, for the quick seconds between representing birth, life, death, judgment, Copious amounts of Elodia cells oozed out of your nail beds as you separated the flesh from my bone, digging through, into, out of, me. The ocean being the expulsion of my insides. This is not a metaphor, not syntax, nor over-exaggerated imagery. It is simply a recounting of the occurrence. Energy leading to the preservation of self. Life, only part of the whole, giving way to lifelessness. No part of the coast willing to claim us whole, only as the crystallized fractures from the ridges between jar and lid. Back door swinging shut, rides just to ask for love, no love, empty honey jars, light streaming through large windows, holding, asking you not to fight with her, looking up how I was looking down, playing with fish eyes on kitchen floor, Dropping slinky down basement stairs. Haughty emptiness. Why is darkness so familiar without you in it? You didn't even bother to stay in the shadows. Instead, how am I supposed to forget? Forgive? Psychosis makes full eyes water into extended fullness. You were always the one who killed me in my dreams. Yet when I almost died, you whispered empty apologies. How I do not appreciate you how I feel no connection to you. Why do figs fall off fig trees and rot at the bases? Why did your love fall from your heart and rot around my ankles? Rested love in the back shed, honeysuckles in the yard growing on gates, summer sun down yellow slide, weak. I wonder if you ever visited those buried bodies. I wonder if those miscarried fetuses rot in earth like cicadas and figs do around tree bases and your love does around my ankles. I never wanted you to be sorry. I just wanted you to try and fill the honey jars with more love, place the figs in your heart, reverse the collision of the suicide as it unattempted itself, roll apologies into the fish eyes, bite honeysuckles on your own time, buy the fetus a headstone and stop moving on when there's too much you've left empty. I wonder if you ever worry about the growing fetus inside your new wife, never being birthed. Maybe you were always the problem. Bad genes, ugly genes and big timberlands. I always stood around your ankles and you never picked me up. Maybe that is why I'm still down. On behalf of anyone who has waded this tide, you said that someone looked over you, past you, eyes glaring into whitewashed walls, I settling on legacy student, POC being PO contraband, translation, nothing. Translation, the infiltration of an insular area with otherness, that previously regarded and in the regarding erased, that existing when told not to. You spilled these memories to me in my college interview. You spilled, coating my ears in toxic filth, turning me off from the school entirely. After the Super Bowl, I imagined a dozen St. Joe's students baptized in the Schuylkill. I imagined a dozen UPenn students gunned down on Chestnut after blocking traffic, you know, like protesters are. A dozen Temple students arrested on Broad. Think about displacement. The nine white boys next door banging on and screaming through my bedroom wall. Beer drunk. How I went part in none of it. You said, do I, you, we, Notice how no one was killed this time. Listen to me. Do you hear it? The inflection or lack thereof? It is moments like these I think of mouths full of grasses. 
feces baked into a pie. I will pour the accumulated tension as melted wax back into your torso instead of telling you these stories. Again, this is not a metaphor, just life. I will puncture my own veins and pump carbon dioxide into bloodstream, unhook detoxifying IV, and won't pray for the moving tectonic plates to take me home. But what does this say of my skin's gravity against the world? What does the slay of flesh torn inside out, honey rusted cicadas, hexagonal wax, but memoried metaphor? Where are the lines or curvatures between your skin and the rest of the world? I'll read one more from here. Um, to be, to be black, idiosyncratic Muslim girl child is to be lost and found. The depression and the depressed, the religion and the sinner, the lie and the truth, the psychosis and the psychotic, the fruit and the infectious weeds, the tear and the retraction of sadness, the ache and the needle and the stitch, the family and the estranged, the kitten and the lion, the poet and the poem, the ten and the zero, the date and the dated, the empty pot and the full belly, the wink and the snicker, the dead and the reborn, the onion and the dry eye, the contradictor and the contradicted, the hopeless and the hopeful, the key and the shackle, the fear and the fearlessness, the plentiful and the impoverished, the lonely and the accompanied, the present and the gone, the accepted and the rejected, the dying and the life support, the moon and the sun, son and daughter, the decision and the interjection, the charged and the acquitted, the stability and the torn upness, the glue and the fracture, the bee sting and the lavender oil, the parched desert and the cool tsunami. To be black idiosyncratic Muslim girl child is to be optimistic and worn out, tired and well, west, well rested, suicidal and content, diamond and steel, lilac and azure, peaceful and American, refugee and citizen, tree trunk and twig, scared and wide open, disease and antibiotic, St. John's wort and Prozac, holy cow and leather wallet, beach and busy city, serenity and chaos, prepared and oblivious, heat and shade, shadow and original being, death and life itself, itself, it, self, it, self, it, enough. I'll read one more poem that um, I'm working on. And this is Dispatch 2024. I did not consent to society, and yet the birds still sing. Everything has an umbilical except for the empire. The orange man on my glass screen instructs the empire's residents to puncture their skin and leak in chemicals. We are water, and we are instructed to inject our interior oceans with poison. I do not remember the orange man's name. I do not remember where the orange man lives. I do not remember the beginning or the end of his reign. I do not recognize the empires ever existing. I do not remember the flag of the empire. I remember only its construction. Artificial lattices of steel built without a loving mother to be tenderly cut from. Each day I perform an inventory of the master's tools. The mining of the earth equals a body excavated for cities, roads, assassination. I remember orange and alabaster men for centuries raising flags and teaching their empire's residents the easiest ways to die. I remember the men killing the original residents of this place I was stolen to. I remember the empire's midwife removing my dead brother from my mother's birth canal because when she said she was in pain, they told her that her pain was not real. I remember this as an instruction of the empire to the fake scientists, a message from a man, TM, and the CDC to the empire's residents. There is no separation. Would they have excavated, preserved, and displayed my mother as the far western empire did Sarchi? She is always near. Miss Sarchi Bartman's memory is held in my memory as an opened wound. The wound refuses the confines of this poem. The wound rejects pity. The wound demands calendula salve, warm water, 
cotton thread in a fresh needle, dried cedar burning over a shrine. The wound demands a mirror, tells me to see my image as a reflection of my matriarchal bloodline, a trail of blood trickling between umbilical cords for centuries behind and in front of me. Thank you. <laughs>